Bun Ken. Go ahead. All right. So I'll be doing your video demo today. Uh, we're going to start with uh, your batteries here. We got one uh, 12 volt deep cycle marine battery inside the box there. Um, and then we also have a battery disconnect switch underneath the tanks there. Um, that's just a simple on and off. Uh, just twist upside down. The smaller end will indicate whether you are turned on or off. Um, this must be on whenever you're plugged in or using it or towing. It does charge off of your vehicle while you're towing it as well as your power cord when you are plugged in. It is important to disconnect that if you're ever uh, going to just store it even for a couple days and it won't be plugged in where it is. You always want to disconnect the battery as there are hardwired detectors inside that will draw that dead on you if you leave that on. Um, next up we got your two 30 pound tanks here. These are full for you right now. Uh, we have a tank selector in the middle here. Uh, the little point on there will dictate your primary uh, tank you're drawing from. It's only going to draw off of one tank at a time. And then inside the lens there, you have a red or green pressure indicator to the tank you're pointing to. Um, it's all pressure based. If that tank is on and full, that will be green. And if it's off or empty, it will be red as it is now. So if we were to turn this tank on now, you will see that indicator go green as soon as pressure is applied to the gas uh, line. That is also auto switch over capable. That means if you want this tank to automatically switch over once that runs empty, you're gonna open your opposite tank valve as well. So with this open, once this runs empty, it's gonna automatically start drawing from the other tank. Your indicator here will not change. The pressure indicator will turn red because you're selecting the empty tank still. Um, so if you're running your furnace at night, that's a nice thing to do so it doesn't cut off on you. Otherwise, most people will run one at a time so that they don't both go empty on you and you won't be completely out of propane. Um, next up, we got your tongue jack here. We just got uh, up and down with the jack. And then we have an on and off button for the front light here. If you're going to have it on at night, it kind of makes it easier to see if uh, so you don't run into the hitch or anything like that. Also, if you're backing up at night, that makes it a nice... Uh, jack down and you can manually crank that up or down and then a seven way cord there's a little holder for the seven way on the front here got safety chains here um, as well as a safety breakaway cable attached to this chain uh, that's linked to a module back here uh, in the event that you were to come unhooked from your ball while towing the chains are supposed to catch but if these were to break for any reason this is your third fail safe and this pulls out of this module locks the brakes while you're towing so it won't roll off without you into the sunset. You must have your battery hooked up and battery disconnect turned on for this to operate while you're towing. Very important that is turned on while towing. Uh, that about does it for the front half here. We do have a little convenience light here with a little on and off switch on the bottom of it. That does help if you are out here um, doing stuff at night. You can kind of see what you're doing. Nice bright LED on there. Moving on around here, we've got four stabilizer jacks on all four corners. Those will take a three quarter inch socket to run up and down. Those are mainly meant for stabilizing the trailer once you have it leveled. Those are not meant to level the trailer or lift the trailer's weight. Uh, if you have a drill bit with a three quarter inch socket, uh, those make it nice and easy to put those up and down so you don't have to crank as much. Up top here we have a fresh tank fill. So this is gonna gravity fill your onboard tank. If you did not have water service where you were going, state parks a lot of times don't have water hookups. You can fill the onboard tank and take the water with you. Or a lot of state parks will have water hookups at the front entrance where you can fill up your camper for when you are camping there. There's also a gravity drain out the bottom. There's a large drain on here that drains out that fresh tank. So if you don't want to haul the water weight, those can be uh, three or 400 pounds when full. So it's nice to drain that out before you leave. Um, it does drain quite rapidly, so just be ready for that. You've got your front compartment here, where you'll see your 30 amp power cord. That is 25 feet long, 30 amp 110. A couple of uh, convenience lights in here. These just have center push buttons in here. down you are equipped with the slide topper up there that is a um, automatic awning that opens and closes with the slide out it protects your slide out roof from sticks and uh, pine cones and debris also deflects the rain off of the roof of the slide which helps uh, helps uh, along
elongate the life of your seals. Keeps the rain and sun off of them as well. And then we have the water heater here. This will be a six gallon propane or electric water heater. Um, you can have those on separately or together. It's all controlled from inside. It lights automatically as well as there is an electronic button inside to activate your electric element. Um, you can have those on in unison. Um, down here we have a little on and off button. That is a uh, secondary electric element switch. This must be turned on as well as the inside electric element switch for the, uh, for the electric element to work. They both must be on. Um, this one's just a fail safe. This gets shut off during the winter and this prevents the inside switch from accidentally activating the element while this tank is empty. That will burn out in about four minutes with no water. So when this gets emptied and winterized in the winter time, this gets shut off out here and that prevents that from happening. Again, they both, they, you must turn this on as well as the inside electric switch for the electric element to operate. There's also a drain plug here to drain the water heater out. And then we have a pressure relief valve at the top. Um, that also, you always want to let the pressure out of here before you pull the plug. And you can also verify that there's water in the tank. If you just give this a pull, it will spray water out and that will indicate that it is full and ready to operate. That's about it for the water heater there. Um, on the top here, we have cable satellite hookups here. One's cable, one's satellite here. If you have full site hookup with that service available, you can plug those in right there. We have your city water connection. This will be your direct hose hookup at your campsite or home. When hooked up with the hose, you do not require your water pump on. You will be uh, running straight from your hose pressure throughout your camper. Gives you direct pressure to the water lines. Uh, unlike the fresh tank, if you filled up the tank, you will need the water pump turned on to use your water. Um, on the top here, you can see it says tank flush. So this will be a rinse system to the sewer tank. As your tag indicates, it is most important that your black tank is open and emptied before you ever pressurize the black tank flush. This is something you would utilize after you've dumped out your tanks and you have your sewer hose hooked up with your black and gray tanks open. You can pressurize this. It will spin and rinse inside your tank and help rinse off the sensors and help it from falsely reading. Um, on the bottom right, we have an antifreeze inlet. This will be used for winterization. Uh, there are valves on the inside to turn suction to this outlet and you can use this to draw antifreeze through your system using your water pump. It makes it nice and easy to winterize. I don't have my keys on me right now, but there is just an outside shower. It just has a basic hot and cold knob on it and a shower head there for rinsing stuff off outside. A lot of people rinse off their greasy dishes outside using their hot water. That helps from getting that stuff inside your plumbing and clogging it up. As well as your power cord connection here. Your power cord will hook up here and give you your electrical. Um, down below here we have your tank drains. We have a black handle on the right and a gray handle on the left. Those are color coordinated. Uh, gray is your wastewater from sinks and showers. Black is straight from your toilet and you're just going to pull those to open. Uh, we always recommend draining the black first, followed up with the gray. That will help rinse all the stuff out of your hose. And uh, that's just kind of a good way to rinse stuff out. And then you just got your little cap here that will twist off. Your sewer hose will twist on there. You will put that to where you're dumping and drain your black and gray tanks out. We have your rear stabilizer jack there. That will help stabilize it as well as the other three on the other corners. Moving on to the back side here. We have a full size spare tire here. Um, that is uh, have a three quarter inch uh, lugs on it so you can use your crank handle to pull that off as well. Um, you're also pre-equipped with the Furion backup camera prep so you can always add that on later if you ever want to add a backup camera. That model is always on display in your vehicle so you can see behind you when you are merging which makes that a very nice tool to use. We got the fridge vent. This is mainly going to have uh, just vent heat out of the fridge. There's not much to do inside there. Uh, we got the ladder for the fully walkable roof. Uh, you want to hop up there about every six months, check out your roof seals. You got a one piece rubber roof. So you're really only looking over where you see your sealant, making sure there's no air bubbles or cracks in the sealant. Um, that is done about twice a year, every six months or so. Uh, moving on the side here. We got a furnace vent here. Just want to make sure nothing flammable or meltable in front of that while it's running. It does vent out pretty hot exhaust while it's operating. Got a couple outside speakers up there, so that will be linked to your radio inside. You can connect your radio or Bluetooth and play music outside here. Um, we also got uh, 
little hood range vent flap here. So this will be exhaust fan above the stove. Got a couple tabs on there to pop that open when you're using the exhaust fan. You want to make sure to re uh, re-secure that when you guys are going to travel. It's important that that stays uh, secured while travel so it doesn't flap in the wind and, and get damaged on you. A little bit farther down we have the V-mount uh, TV mount. This also matches the one inside so your TV inside can be unhooked and pulled right up off of the mount and you can transfer it right out here. And those connections will be hooked back up here. We got cable or antenna output and we also have some 110 outlets to plug into. If you have a table or anything you can also use it for those. Uh, we have the track here for the, the griddle that's included as well as a countertop piece that slides on here so that gives you some prep area and a cooking space. Uh, the grill is going to be hooked up down below here. We have a low pressure propane quick disconnect. It's kind of like an air hose fitting. Just hooks right up to the hose and pops right on there. Then you're going to open your valve back up to open that and operate it. Um, through the little hole here, this is going to be a manual override for your slide out on the other side. You'll have a crane candle that goes in here and that cranks the slide in from the other side in case it ever malfunctions. You wouldn't be stuck with it out and you can get it serviced, uh, take it somewhere and get it serviced. We got some solar on the side here. This will be a portable solar hookup here. This generally will go to a suitcase style solar kit. Those will open up and just be set in the grass and those plug right in here. That will send a direct trickle charge to the battery off of solar. So if you're gonna do any off the grid camping, that is a good option there. They come in various uh, sizes and wattages for that. Uh, up inside here, we got some uh, various accessories in here, towel rack, toilet paper rack. Um, we got some spatula action here. Uh, some link cables, if you're gonna add a second battery, it comes with cables for that. And then your direct uh, low pressure connection hose here for the grill. And this is just kind of a little pouch to keep everything in here. Uh, we also have your aluminum countertop here. It comes with a little support underneath and it just slides right on the track there, nice and easy. Uh, that's nice and easy to operate there. Another push button LED there, convenience light in the compartment. Uh, your three crank handles are nicely magnetized on the front wall here. The top one, the longer one, will be for the slide out override. And then your second one will be your three quarter inch uh, crank handle for the stabilizer jacks on all four corners. And then the smallest one here will go to the tongue jack. That will crank that manually. And they're nicely organized on the front wall for you. Um, I'll run inside here and open up our awning so you guys can see that open up. steps here that are going to open right up. We're going to step right inside here. We're going to have the awning switch right on here. Just got to extend retract button. You're just going to go ahead and extend this guy out until you see your flap of fabric come down on the end there. It doesn't stop on its own so you're going to want to look at that. And whenever you see the seam of the flap come straight down at the ground, you're going to want to stop it there. You'll see what I'm talking about when it gets all the way out here. So here comes the flap there. So as soon as that points straight down, make sure you get the seam pointing straight down there. So here's the little flap I was talking about. So as soon as that comes straight down, that's going to be all the way out for you. And uh, you can also put a tilt on the awning and change the pitch. If you're anticipating rainfall, sometimes you just want to block out your neighbors. You can go ahead and pull this down. And then you got some knobs here. Just tighten this guy right up. And that's going to hold that pitch for you, as well as the other side if you just want to lower the whole thing. Uh, they are assisted by a gas strut here. So that means as soon as you loosen this guy, it's going to put it right back up where, you, uh, where it has to be. Before it runs in, you want to ensure that you've loosened both of these knobs so that it uh, can close properly. And then uh, we got the solid steps here. These fold straight up into the doorway here. They are also assisted by a gas strut, so they are nearly weightless. Uh, we have a couple pins here in the bottom. These pins can be removed and the legs can be extended or retracted depending on your grade that you're at. These will fold up nicely inside the door frame here. And once they are in the door frame and the door shuts, the door will kind of sandwich them in there and they will not move any farther than that. Makes it nice and uh, easy to keep these in good shape here. That's about it for the outside here if you guys want to head on to the inside. 
Looks like we have a little tank heater switch here. So that's gonna go to thermostatic heating pads on the tanks. Um, those activate if it gets about under 35 degrees, the tank heaters will activate and keep your tanks from freezing up on you. You guys can head right on inside there. You got the control panel here on the right side. Uh, most of your lights are uh, nicely labeled here. Interior lights will do the main lights inside. Porch light will do the little orange light on the outside here, as well as the awning LEDs. And then we have a Wi-Fi Ranger power button here. The Wi-Fi switch is going to go to the top uh, sticker here. You have a little network and password. Um, so you're going to connect that to your phone and select the network you're trying to pull in, such as the campgrounds network. And that will amplify the Wi-Fi signal and give you a stronger signal to use on your devices. And then we have your slide out switch here, in and out for that guy. And then ex extend and retract for the awning. Now we'll go ahead and run the slide out here. Um, so this has got a ram style slide that means you'll hear it start clicking when it gets all the way out So you just listen for that when it's coming out That will be all the way out for that guy. Uh, coming back to the control panel, uh, we have uh, your tank levels here, fresh tank, black tank, and gray tank, as well as your battery level. You just push and hold to indicate. It will indicate empty to full on the top side inside the bubbles there. So there is a little bit of fresh water on board and black and gray tanks are empty. Uh, water pump power, if you filled up the fresh tank and you're running off the fresh tank, you just need to click your pump on. And here are your water heater gas switches and water heater electric. You can again have those both turned on together or separate. Um, just depends on how you guys are hooked up. Um, down below we have your thermostat. This one's a pretty simple one. You got cool fan and heat on the bottom left. And then fan speed, you can set the fan on by itself low or high or turn it on auto, which means it'll turn on by itself with the uh, air conditioner or the furnace. And then we have a simple slider switch to select your temperature there. And then behind you here we have a converter. This will handle your onboard charging as well as your breakers. So if you pop it open here, all your 110 breakers are on the left side labeled here. 12 volt fuses are on the right side, what they go to and what amperage they require. You have red LEDs next to each fuse that lights up next to any blown fuses, which makes it easy to see if anything is going on. You will also see those lights through this little window. Once this plastic is removed, you'll be able to see it a little easier. You can just give that a rough glance, make sure there's no red lights on um, at that time. And then propane gas leak and carbon monoxide detector combo. That one's hardwired in. That's one of the detectors that drains your battery if you leave it hooked up. So that's why we want to disconnect it when we're not using it. Uh, we got the fridge here. Looks like we've got the eight cubic foot model fridge here. Um, we have the controls on the top here. We have auto and gas selection here. Um, this one's got the new audible beep. Um, so you got your simple on and off switch here. And then auto and gas are your two functions you can choose from. Uh, most people leave it on auto. That means it's gonna go to electric first. It always wants your electric over propane. And if you were to unplug it or lose power, it's gonna switch itself to uh, propane automatically. And with the alarm here, what they have added is an audible alarm. So if it tries to switch to propane, but it cannot light on propane, it starts alarming so you know that it is not running on either source. So you don't lose all your food. At that time, you just want to light your stove or verify that your tanks are on and not empty. Um, and then if you depress this button out, that will select gas primarily. I have, don't have it on right now because we don't have the propane turned on, so it's gonna beep on us. Um, you'll see it beep here in a second. I did turn the tanks on, so it might be, but that's the basics of the fridge there. There's also instructions on the top here, so that does give you another rundown of the operation of it. So we'll go ahead and close that up for now. Uh, we do have two sets of keys here, right behind the sink. Uh, a couple push, uh, got a push button LED on the top there. A standard microwave. And then your stove here, propane stove does have an electronic igniter, so you're just going to fold the glass up here. Uh, turn your burner on that you want to select and hold your igniter until it ignites for you. Again, I believe the propane is turned off at the moment. There it goes. 
So we got propane on, you're gonna turn your other burner on, light that one, same thing all the way around. So that's the operation of those. It is quite warm here, so we're gonna turn these off. With the, stove, with the oven knob here, this one is slightly different as you have to push and hold it at the pilot on position while you're sparking or it will not ignite for you. That's a fail safe so that the oven knob doesn't get accidentally bumped and it doesn't fill the oven with propane turning it into a bomb. All the windows here are mostly all crank out, so you're gonna crank this clockwise and they will all open for you. Frameless windows, they are very nice as well as the way they open, uh, rainfall will deflect off of them so they don't flood inside. We have a little vent fan and light here for the oven. The TV here, um, the radio DVD player, this will be connected to the TV so you can pop a movie in there. Um, TV is on a swivel bracket so that will pop out and be able to be turned. Um, you do have a digital TV antenna so you'll get all your local channels there without being hooked up to anything except for one tent. So you'll be able to get all your local TV in. Um, down below we have the electronic fireplace that is electric heat. A lot of people say they can heat most of their trailer just using the electric heat from the fireplace. There is variable uh, brightnesses. You can uh, The controls are on the top here. You have a power button and then a dimmer and then uh, min to max uh, fan speed as well as a temperature selection slash timer. You'll see a little screen illuminate on the top right that will indicate temperature and timer uh, settings on that. Uh, we have your griddle there and the boxes down below the bed there. So that will be what attaches on the outside there. Um, we got the front window, the shades on, on these windows, they just slide right up and down and they will stay wherever you put them. So those are nice ones there. We have a charging center on the left with some USB ports and a little 12 volt cigarette lighter plug as well as outlets on both sides. Uh, this bed will also lift up here. And you'll have a little bit of storage there. You got a couple drawers underneath there to store stuff in. So that is a pretty nice feature also as well as the, uh, the curtain there on the wall will slide over and kind of separate the sleeping area. Looks like you got two curtains that come together. We have the digital TV rotator. This one does not go up or down. It just kind of rotates for reception. So nothing to forget about. Kind of makes it a little bit nicer so you don't forget about it. Uh, the, the vents in the top here, these are going to go to your air conditioner. These can be uh, pointed around as well as closed off or open depending on where you want the air to go most. You can close the rest of them and have it all blowing on your bed if you'd like. Um, over here on the chairs. Um, these are electronic. We do have a couple of vibrating settings as well as uh, illuminated cup holders and heat settings. We don't have the power cord hooked up at the moment, so those are not operational unless they're hooked up to 110. We have a little, a little countertop here that gives you additional storage for laptops, drinks, food, stuff like that. And the recliner portions are these pull cords down and the sides of them will make it recline for you. A little... Uh, console that's pretty deep there that does have some uh, USBs and a electronic hookup there for 110 and they have a slide lock included standard with all Flagstaff units I believe this is uh, basically intended for if you ever had to run the slide in manually that will attach between the wall and the back of the fascia when it is in and that just prevents it from accidentally coming out while you're in travel. That's basically only used if you have to manually override your slide and you are traveling to get it repaired. We have a little push button light here for this light here. Um, the emergency exit here can be opened for fresh air. You're just going to kind of unhook it off the handle here and that will be able to be opened. Let in some fresh air at night if you're not running the air conditioner. Most of your lights here as well, they have optional push buttons. If you don't want them all on, you can turn them on and off at your discretion, whichever kind of lighting you, you prefer inside here. We also have a little countertop extension. This guy just kind of folds up, and then your arms down here will click uh, straight outward. That kind of props it up, and when you're going to put it down, you're going to lift it and just push those in, and it does kind of click down there see where the paperwork is in this one. It's probably hiding in one of these drawers here. Maybe the bigger ones over here. Maybe not. Maybe it's in the fridge here. Alright, owner's manuals and appliance information as well as the uh, T 
TV remote will be inside the packet here. We got coaxial cable for the outside if you added another TV. This will be a tire pressure monitoring system. This will be uh, linked into your vehicle via 12 volt plug, a cigarette lighter, and this will alert you if your tires go below or above the allotted temperature or uh, pressures. So that's pretty nice. The tires already have the sensors on the valve stems in them, as well as a couple of, we got TV legs down here, and then a mattress heater. This will plug into the end of the mattress, and you can have a heated mattress as well if you're camping in colder conditions. We got a, the air conditioner unit here. You got a couple of what we call like dump vents. If you open these, it dumps most of the air straight out of the bottom of the air conditioner and cools it more rapidly. Um, but with them closed, it will push more pressure through your vents and kind of disperse the air a little more evenly. Moving on into the restroom here. You got a little light switch here on the left side. Uh, we got a crank up vent fan. This will be a four speed vent fan. Already comes equipped standard with a vent cover on the roof with a screen and louver in the back. So you are able to leave this open without fear of rain getting in or bugs. And then we just have a 12 volt fan and four optional speeds there. Pretty nice draw on that guy. And we got a fan off button. Kind of just shut this guy back up for now. We got a pedal flush toilet here. This is a nice porcelain toilet so you're not sitting on plastic. Um, this will come out in a swirl motion and it kind of cleans itself nicer than the standard that just comes out of the back And then we got the pedal flush down here Most important that you always keep some kind of water covering the bottom that prevents the sewer gases from seeping up and making it smell like a porta potty um, Generally if you barely push the pedal down you can get this to fill up with more water So if you prefer more in there while you're using it you can fill it up and then when you push it all the way it's going to flush and it generally leaves some water in there on its own so you don't have to manually fill it every time you just want to ensure that that always is covered to keep the smell down and then there's a little outlet here gfi that's linked to all the outlets that has a reset on it just like a standard home would have a little medicine cabinet here a little towel rack here and got some toothbrush holders stuff like that a little shelf there um, the shower here we got the magnetic here that opens right up got standard hot and cold there um, we got the shower miser valve here so uh, it's this kind of recirculates the water when you turn this that will recirculate it so it's not wasting all the water while you're uh, bathing um, so it's recommended that you turn that off kind of bathe up and then turn it back on and rinse yourself off that helps uh, elongate your water usage so you're not running out of hot water as quickly a little drain there we'll put that guy down in there and then close that guy back up a little uh, skylight in there as well and there's a little cabinet in there as well underneath the sink I do believe that is about the gist of the thing uh, besides your various cabinets here you got outlets on the left side of the counter there as well as the right side over here there's some on the side there as well um, the, the sink cover comes with a little this actually goes for plates you can put plates on here and strain them out and there is a little knife block some people put knives behind the stove there kind of help store those just depends on what you want to do with the space you got but uh this has been your walkthrough i believe that is about all